Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I think we all know that golf professionals are working on their swings as well all the time. Always trying to improve, always trying to get better. So the automation of new movement is even a problem for professional golfers. And then executing that new movement in a golf shop without conscious thought has got to be the target for us all. How to do that? Coming up in a second. Ready? Uh, a little bit different one today. Um, I think a lot of us actually kind of believe that golf professionals and tour professionals especially, they were just born being able to do it and they don't have to think too much about what they're doing when they're playing this game. Um, natural talent and ability is basically helping them and that way we think that we're in this fight alone to actually improve technique all the time. I can tell you out of my own experience, I know very few golf professionals who don't work on their swing all the time. Um, there's always something in our brains which is saying we could be better and often it's that attempt to get better which makes us worse. So if you're watching the channel on a regular basis and you're taking up the information and the ideas that I'm presenting to you, it's a very good idea to actually get an idea, a way of automating uh, these new swing ideas and then carrying them out and executing them on a golf course with as little conscious thought as possible. So I thought I'd run you through a bit of a checklist about how you could do that. So uh, please forgive me having to read from a script a bit today, but this will kind of give me some bullet points so that I can, I can tell you this without it looking or, or, or getting a little bit too monotonous and me droning on. So there's four things I think that you're gonna to have to do to start off with. The first thing is, is you've gotta get or build a repetitive movement and then to a greater extent, you're gonna do this through drills. The second thing is to get what we call an association. Um, if you're making a, a movement every day, for your brain basically that's aerobic, so it's got no idea what it's good for. All that you're doing is actually increasing or, or improving your movement ability in a particular area but your brain's not quite sure what it's good for. An association basically just says, this is the job that this movement is good for. So after you actually are capable of making the movement, the trick is to go to the next step and just get the association so that your brain knows, ah yeah, this movement's good for this job. The third thing is obviously the most tricky and that's executing the shot. How do you actually execute this shot? How do you go out? onto a golf course under pressure and carry it out. And a great deal of that is about getting a bit of perspective um, in order to actually uh, help you to execute the shot without getting in your own way. And finally, it's all about building confidence and self-belief. Um, unfortunately, I think especially in the Western world, we are prone to negativity, to uh, really more negativity towards ourselves as towards necessarily the outside world, but we'll always find a reason why it won't work. And building more confidence in your ability and, um, and believing in yourself is, is really one of the big keys to getting out there and playing your best golf. And I think that more than anything else is one of the abilities that the tour professionals bring with them, is that they, are, they have this extraordinary self-belief and even if you do put a hurdle in their way they'll find a way of turning that around and making it actually work for them. So let's get straight into it and say well to start off with then how do we actually do this? How do we first of all build um, a repetitive movement? Now the scientists have been saying for a long time certain numbers that you should be actually achieving in repetition but once you've actually devised a, an exercise or a drill which will help you to make that movement, the trick is basically around about 1800 repetitions of the movement before you've built the synapses in your brain and you've actually built the ability in your body to make this movement and to make it automated. And these repetitions have got to take place over around about six to eight week period. 
what you want to be doing then is building. You are building in this, in this phase of your learning. You're building um, a feeling for what you understand. If you have actually understood the video that you've watched, the question is how does it feel in your body when you make this movement? And then you will be able to use that feeling, that stretching of one side, that working of another muscle. What is it which is different to what you've been doing in the past? And if you can make that feeling something which is actually you're able to grab and hold, then that's going to help you a great deal when you're on the golf course. You want to be able to master a technique. You want to be able to build the physicality to, to, to reproduce that technique. And that might mean, might mean getting more mobility into your body, more strength, more speed. Um, all of these things are part of the building process, but you've got to see them sometimes as individual blocks so that you can identify what's holding you back. You're just not doing enough repetitions, or are you so stiff that you can't get into the position that the, the, the teacher is trying to show you? If you've got that all done, the next stage is basically the association. How can I tell my brain that this is the reason I've been doing these exercises. Everybody can sit in the car and, and pull down the steering wheel to the left, but not everybody is able to, to drive a Formula One car or a rally car or do it at high speed. But if you are capable of doing that, I can guarantee you none of them are thinking about what they're doing with their left hand. What they're thinking about or visualizing is where the car is going to go. And it's similar here with a golf ball. We are thinking about where the golf ball has got to go, how high it's got to fly, how far it's got to fly, and what it does when it lands. And these things are visualized in a professional's mind before he carries out the shot. And I think all of us would basically say we will not carry out the shot until we have this visualization. So that's something you have to work on. That means basically imagining the shot that you want to make, carrying out the movement and seeing the shot you want to make. Now, if you can't imagine how a golf ball flies because you've never hit one the way that you want to, then you can reverse engineer it. You can carry out your new swing, watch the shot that you've hit and remember it. Remember how the ball flies. Now, obviously, during your repetitions, you can hit balls. And when you're hitting balls, I just want you to remember them. I want you to commit them to memory so that you can call them out in the next phase and think, okay, I can remember the ball flying like that. And your brain will then automatically know, oh yeah, I remember that as well. And when the ball flew like that, I did this. And that is basically how we usually work in life. We'll basically see a result and our brain will call up the movement which actually created the result. And that's what we call association. Getting a visual feeling for what it is you want to do. The most difficult part, however, is the execution under pressure. And the reason for that is the pressure. If you feel no pressure, then you are going to be able to carry out the movement and you will get the result, not always the result that you were looking for, but the result that your body was capable of at, at that moment. So I think in this kind of third part of the process, this just do it if you want, carry out the shot, execute the shot, is about kind of moving particular sliders up and particular sliders down. And by sliders, I'm talking about particular notions. I want to change. Sometimes they're almost kind of belief systems. But if I just kind of run through a list for you, I want more clarity, but I want less distractions. I want to hope less for a good result, um, but I want to focus more on what it is that I want to be doing. I want to reduce my fear of failure um, and I want to reduce my expectations. But at the same time, I want to enjoy doing it. 
I want to actually look forward to the shot without dreaming about un unbelievable uh, success, which is probably beyond my capabilities. I want to lower altogether my need for success and also lower my fear of failure. And I want to hire my, comp my concentration. I want to get perspective. How important is this to my life? And will the sun go up tomorrow if it doesn't work out? I want to make this a habit. I want to get conviction. Um, I want to make it a, an action and not a reaction. I want to be able to really carry out a passive execution of the shot um, with a quiet mind and belief in my ability. So you can see there's things we want to be making better and things we want to be reducing. We want to reduce anxiety and, and uh, build up belief. We want to increase our confidence in ourselves. We want to reduce our fear of, of uh, failure and sometimes even our fear of success. And you've got to identify each of these different channels and maybe um, work on them individually in order to kind of build this complete whole, which is gonna allow you to just execute the shot. I hope that wasn't too much, um, but the, really there's none of those things I think that you can't regard to at least some extent. And hopefully you'll be able to just say, I can, um, and then this, do it, uh, but uh, the majority of us just can't. So finally, it's all about building systems, what I call reward systems, um, which help my confidence and my self-belief, because basically that is what's gonna make carrying out the shot in the end easier or more difficult, the more I believe in my ability to do it. Um, I watch a channel a lot um, with two guys, uh, an aspiring golf professional, uh, tour professional, he's already a golf professional called Alex, and his mate Biff. Um, and Alex has been uh, playing golf for a long time um, and not made it on the tour. Biff's on the tour. He's a guy called Paul Waring. I'll leave a, a link to their site uh, below. Um, but they come up with some, some moments of wisdom and I would recommend you watch their site. One of the things that, that Paul talks about is not a careless attitude to it, as if he couldn't care less, but a more of a carefree. It's very difficult to go into a shot and really want it to work and need it to work, um, but not to care if it works. But only if you can see the thing in perspective, only if you can reduce the pressure that you put on yourself are you going to be able to play the shot to the best of your ability? And this, I think, is one of the true abilities of all great sportsmen. The ability to see things in perspective and to believe in themselves in situations where we would all be worried. We tend to watch ourselves in sport as if we were watching other sportsmen on the television, um, where we're getting wound up about the opportunities that are facing them, the chances of success and disaster so, so close to one another when a footballer takes a penalty, when, when somebody hold, tries to hold the last putt on a green. We are up there fevering with them, scared about what both results could actually mean to their careers. They can't do that. They've got to keep an equal equilibrium in their emotions in order to be able to carry out the shot to the best of their abilities. And I think this is something that we all struggle with immensely. And I'm not just talking about uh, professional athletes, I'm talking about hobby athletes as well. I think we all put ourselves under far too much pressure. And it's one of the things that I'm working on a lot in my own game to try and get a bit of perspective. And remember, I'm not a tour professional. I don't have to hit every golf ball perfectly, even though I understand how to do it, or at least I think I understand how to do it. Generally, it's all about getting balance and perspective into your game so that you can go up to a golf ball and, 
and as Nike said in their uh, well-known slogan, just do it. But it's easier said than done and it takes a lot of work. So altogether, um, find a drill that gives you a feeling and do it often enough so that you can rely on it. Associate it with, an, with a, a result, whether it be by hitting balls and watching them or imagining the ball fly even before you've hidden it and then hitting it. And getting that to a point where one is the other. The movement produces the, the result and the result produces the movement. And finally, learn to execute the shot without any pressure. Try and get there to get it to a point where you simply go up to the golf ball, believe it's going to all go right, and then you just hit it. Easier said than done. It is a difficult game, but that's what keeps us coming back. I hope you liked the video. If you did, smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done already. Um, I'll be back very shortly, and if you want to know when I post my next video, you hit the little bell and it will send you a notification. Look after yourselves until the next time. Bye-bye now.